Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the MLB slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Tuesday, August the 11th. Uh, we got a 12-game slate on both sites. We're going to break down this slate uh, and start off at pitcher like we always do. I'll uh, work our way through the pitcher player pool. I will hit on all the guys that I have interest in today uh, that I feel like I'm going to have exposure to. Then we'll take a look at three specific hitters that I like. For DraftKings and for Yahoo, we'll talk about their pricing specifically. And towards the end of the video, uh, we will cover some stacks I like for my tournament lineups, uh, teams that I feel like I'm going to be stacking up. But before we do get started, guys, as always, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well if you are new here. I am uploading MLB videos every single day to this YouTube channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that way you do get notified every time I upload and you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. Uh, and if you would like, I do have more content available on Patreon. If you really enjoy these MLB videos, if they have helped you um, and, and you want to get more content from me, I do have stuff available on Patreon. I will have a full breakdown article for this slate where I go position by position, write up all my favorite plays at each position. Uh, that article is usually posted sometime in the morning, you know, around 10 or 11 o'clock Eastern Time, just whenever I can get it finished. So definitely check out the Patreon, see all that I have to offer uh, over there. It's linked down in the description. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at pitcher for today. We will start off at the top. We only have one guy over 10K on DraftKings, and that is Max Scherzer. Uh, he's 10,800 in a matchup against the Mets. So I definitely like Max Scherzer here. I think he is just underpriced for the talent that he has, for the strikeout upside that he has. Um, he was, I believe, uh, hurt in that last game against the Mets. He had to leave that start because of a hamstring injury. And that caused him to, you know, obviously he had to come out of the game. He only pitched one inning, uh, had to come out of the game. But he didn't miss, you know, any starts after that. He, like, this is his next scheduled start. He only, he pitched that game against the Mets five days ago. So I don't expect this to be, like, a major issue for him, uh, for Scherzer. Although he did have to leave that game because of the injury. You know, this is obviously not an, a major injury if he's, you know, able to make his next start. So I'm expecting him to be full go here. No limitations. And if that's the case, at 10,800, I do have a lot of interest in Max Scherzer. This is just a guy that can go out there and mow down any lineup, can go out there and get, you know, 10, 11, 12 strikeouts. I mean, I don't, I'm not even counting that Mets start because he had to leave after the first inning. Against the Blue Jays, you know, seven in the third innings, only allowed three hits, you know, 10 strikeouts against the Yankees. Tough matchup, five in the third innings. Did give up four runs, but still got 11 strikeouts against the Yankees. Like, this is a guy that just has massive strikeout stuff, or massive strikeout upside. He has great strikeout stuff. I know last year, his K rate, I'm pretty sure it was over 30%. Like, it was around 35 36%. If we do look at K rate last season against right-handed pitching, you know, the Mets were not a team that struck out much. They were about middle of the pack in K rate, uh, in K rate I do believe. Let me find the Mets real quick. Yeah, they were towards the bottom. They were 21.9% K rate against right-handed pitching. If we do take a look for their, uh, take a look at their lineup tomorrow, though, I mean, there are definitely some strikeouts here. You can get some strikeouts from Peter Alonzo. Um, I'm pretty sure Brandon Nimbo will K as well. Uh, Dom Smith, I think he'll strike out. Uh, Ahmed Rosario will strike out against righties. Uh, Wilson Ramos, especially against a you know a good dominant right-handed pitcher like Scherzer, will strike out. I mean, Scherzer has insane numbers against righties. Like his K rate against right-handed hitters, I think is like almost 50%. You know, he does you know struggle more to lefties, but it's not really there's not really lefties in this lineup that I'm worried about. I mean, McNeil and Conforto are solid hitters, but, you know, there's not guys I'm, I'm scared of taking pitchers against, especially an elite pitcher like Scherzer. You know, the Mets have the lowest total on the slate, 3.4 implied run total. I do expect Scherzer to pitch really well here. He's definitely my top pitcher on the slate, and I do want to try and pay up for him. Normally, we see him at, like, 12K. I think we are getting a little bit of a discount on him. At 10.8 on DK, you know, $56 on Yahoo is kind of expensive, but Yahoo's pricing is so soft. You can easily jam in Scherzer over there as well. Like, there's just so many hitters on Yahoo that are, you know, way too cheap that makes it easy to jam in some of the top pitchers. So I love Scherzer here. I think he can definitely mow down this lineup. He he has the talent to do so, uh, mow down this Mets lineup. Dude with great strikeout stuff, can get swings and misses, can get chases uh, with his slider. Just, you know, he's just one of the best pitchers in the league. And I'm not really worried about the injury. Uh, that doesn't seem to, you know, be anything that's bothering him given he's making his next start. He didn't have to miss a schedule start or anything. Uh, so obviously I love Scherzer. Then you have Zach Wheeler, who's also, you know, in a great spot here against the Orioles. Definitely have interest in Wheeler. You know, his price tag is expensive. He's 9900 He is kind of closely priced to Scherzer. 
it's pretty tough to get Scherzer and Wheeler together. You know, if you play those two guys, I think that only leaves you like 3,600 remaining per player. So you're obviously, you know, if you want to play those two guys, you're going to have to find some value. But I don't mind it if you find a cheap stack that you like, because I think Wheeler does have a lot of upside here. This is obviously a great matchup against the Orioles. Uh, the Orioles, in terms of K rate against righties, I believe they were about middle of the pack last season. Uh, 19th in K rate, 22.8%. I've said it like all season, though. I mean, the Orioles just have a bad lineup. This is not a team you're scared of. Uh, only a 3.9 implied run total for them. Uh, Wheeler, you know, pretty heavy favorite here at minus 178. This is another guy that can get strikeouts. Uh, I know he's only got four and two strikeouts through two starts this season, but this is still a guy that has like a K rate, I believe, close to 30%. Can get, you know, a lot of soft contact. That's kind of what he was able to do against the Marlins. You know, only got four strikeouts, but still got 21 DraftKings points, which is solid. This is definitely a Baltimore team that has K's in their lineup. So I do like Zach Wheeler at 9900 On Yahoo, I think you can definitely play Wheeler and Scherzer together with how soft their pitcher pricing is. Uh, Wheeler looks really good on Yahoo. He's only $44. I think that's definitely way too cheap for him. You know, I thought he would be up there around like 50 51 given that Scherzer's 56 So I think we're getting a pretty good price on Zach Wheeler. I feel like he's going to be one of my more you know owned pitchers on Yahoo tomorrow or on Tuesday. Just given that price tag, man, I mean, Wheeler could easily be the highest scoring pitcher on this slate, and I wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, at $44, I do uh, like him a lot over there. But if you want to play Wheeler on DraftKings, I don't mind it. It's just, it's tough to get him and Scherzer together. And straight up, you know, if I can find the money to get to Scherzer, I think I would uh, rather play him. But then you got a guy like Dylan Bundy, who has been awesome to start the season. Uh, through three starts, you know, 28, 19, last start against Seattle, complete game, 41 DraftKings points. Like, he has been dominant. You know, this isn't the best spot against Oakland. You know, Oakland's a pretty right-handed heavy lineup, which is, sets up well for Bundy. But they do have a good amount of power. You know, Simeon, Loriano, Olsen, Chapman, Canna, Davis, like all those guys have some power. You know, there's definitely strikeouts here. I don't know if I can pay 9700 for Bundy when you have, you know, Zach Wheeler for only a couple hundred more in a much better spot. You know, Mike Miner I would like, but I think he's going to be limited. I did see that uh, he's going to have a reduced pitch count here. So that's going to take him out of play for me. I like that matchup for him against Seattle, but with the pitch count, you know, you can't pay 9600 for Miner if he's going to be on a pitch count. So I feel like if I'm playing or if I'm paying up at pitcher today, you know, I'm probably going to just stick to Scherzer and Wheeler. You could go to Bundy, but I doubt that's going to be a guy that I play too much of. Mainly going to stick to Scherzer and Wheeler at the top. Uh, but then if we get down to the mid-range, I mean, there's not much that I like here. You know, in terms of like you know these 8K guys like Lester, I'm not paying for 92 or not. I'm not playing at 9200. He's just too expensive. Doesn't have the upside in my opinion. Zach Gallon and Coors, I don't really want to go there. Mike Fires against the Angels, you know that's not the best spot. Tuki Tucson against the Yankees, incredibly tough matchup. Jordan Montgomery has to face the Braves. That's also a very tough matchup. But then you do have uh, Ross Stripling. I think Ross Stripling is probably the most appealing uh, pitcher in the mid range. 7,900 gets a matchup at home against the Padres. I do like Ross Stripling, uh, Stripling a lot here. This is definitely a matchup I like, I like to attack. Uh, the Padres did have one of the highest strikeout rates against right-handed pitching last season. They were right behind the Tigers. Second highest K rate in the league against righties at 26.5%. They do have a dangerous lineup. They have some power in their lineup, especially at the top with guys like uh, Tatis, Machado, Tommy Pham, even Grisham has shown some power. But these are guys that strike out a ton against righties. I'm pretty sure everyone in this lineup besides Tommy Pham and besides Cronworth have a strikeout rate over 20%. Just a ton of Ks here. You know, it's a tough spot in terms of power because obviously, you know, these guys have a ton of power, but the strikeouts make Ross Stripling a really good option here. Uh, this is a guy that does have K stuff, can get strikeouts. We saw him against this Padres team, you know, in his last start, go five and two-thirds innings. You know, he did, al did allow six hits and four runs. But he got seven strikeouts, which kind of, you know, helped to mitigate the runs. Finished with 18 DraftKings points. Not the best start from Stripling, but 18 DK points. You know, that's not killing you at 7,900. At 7,900, you know, I'm probably looking for like 20 plus at least from Stripling. But even if he gets like 17, 18, that's not too bad, especially because this pitching slate, you know, is not the best. There's not a lot of pitchers in this mid-range that stand out as great plays. Like, I think a lot of them, a lot of them have, you know, negatives going against them. So even a guy like Stripling, you know, I like the strikeout matchup, but I guess there is a negative that, you know, the Padres do have a lot of power. But he looks like one of the better options in the mid-range. I think you can pair him very nicely with Scherzer. You know, that still leaves you 3,900 remaining per player, uh, which you can easily work around. 
if we do get some value at hitter, you know, once lineups come out, if we get some guys, you know, for cheap, batting towards the top of the order that we can target, then that may, uh, might make me want to try and get to uh, Wheeler and pair him with Scherzer if possible. But for now, I'm just going to go with Stripling as an SP2 option. I do like him quite a bit in this mid-range. I like the strikeout-friendly matchup against the Padres. I think that would make, that's what makes him a good option today. And then one more guy you could look to in the mid-range is uh, Brendan, B, uh, Brendan Belock from the Astros. So he made a start, la- you know, his last start against the um, Diamondbacks. This is mainly a guy that worked out of the bullpen, but he did start last game. And he pitched five innings, only allowed two hits and three walks, only got one strikeout, but was able to really limit the damage. You know, he threw 82 pitches in that start. Given that he threw 82 pitches uh, last start, I think we can probably expect probably 85 to 90 here, maybe more if he's pitching well. He's only 7,500, and he does get a very friendly matchup against the Giants. I don't think we have run totals. Now, we don't have run totals for this game yet. But if we do look at this Giants lineup, I mean, it's just not a good lineup. One of the reasons I really like Lance McCullers on Monday was just because the, the Giants are just not a good baseball team. They don't have a good lineup. They have some strikeouts in their lineup as well. I do like B-Lock here. You know, I don't know mu- uh, too much about this guy. But given that he's, you know, 7,500 and he's facing the Giants and he threw eight, he's fully stretched out, he threw 82 pitches last start, you know, that makes me have interest in him today. You know, like I said, the mid-range is not great today, so guys like Stripping and uh, B-Lock, kind of like two of the better options here. You know, Gio Gonzalez has a good matchup against the Tigers, but you never know what you're going to get from Gio Gonzalez. He's just such an inconsistent pitcher, so I don't really know if I want to go there. Like Kyle Freeland pitching in course, I doubt I go there. Rick Porcello against the Nationals, no thank you. Garrett Richards against the Dodgers, don't really want to go there. I could see going to Marco Gonzalez uh, because the Tigers or the uh, the Rangers are a team that does have a lot of strikeouts in their lineup against left-handed pitching. Uh, in terms of K rate against lefties, I believe they were like top five or top ten in the league last season. If we do look at their projected lineup for tomorrow, you know they have a pretty low total, just a 4.3 implied run total. They're going to have a lot of the, uh, lefties in their lineup. They are a pretty left-handed heavy lineup, which is one of the reasons you know they did have such a high K rate against lefties last season. Gonzalez has been pretty good to. Uh, uh, through his last two starts against the Angels he's faced both times his last two starts and you know he's looked good 27 and 26 DraftKings points been getting strikeouts as well six and seven strikeouts there if I'm playing a cheap guy like under 7k today it's definitely going to be Marco Gonzalez I don't really want to go to anyone else under him like Plukto against the Cubs maybe but I doubt I go there maybe on like a Martin Perez like I could see guys like Perez and Plukto you just kind of sprinkle in but I don't expect any of these guys under 7K to be like core plays for me to be a part of my you know core group of pitchers. But I could definitely see Marco Gonzalez making making it into my core group of pitchers just because he's so cheap. The matchup is so good against the Rangers. It's a very strikeout friendly matchup, and this Rangers ballpark, you know, it's playing more towards pitchers this season now that they have a roof, uh, they have a new stadium. You know, kind of helps to mitigate the heat. We're not seeing the crazy high totals that we used to see in Texas. So I do like Marco Gonzalez as a value. But quickly breaking it down, I would say my four favorite pitchers today, I would say five favorite pitchers, like guys that I feel like are definitely going to be in my player pool. Max Scherzer, number one, Zach Wheeler, two, Ross Stripling, number three, uh, B-Lock, number four, and then Gonzalez, number five. Those are kind of like my five guys for today. Usually I don't play too deep, of, or I don't have too deep of a pitcher player pool. I like to really, you know, kind of keep a core group of a uh, core group of pitchers, and then kind of when it comes to stacks, I like to throw in just a, d- a bunch of different stacks. Pitcher's one spot where I kind of like eat the chalk. I don't mind playing a really chalky pitcher. I'll get different with stacks. I'll play low on stacks uh, that I think have upside. So those are kind of the five pitchers that I have my eye on today that I feel like are going to be in my core group of pitchers. Uh, But in my article, you know, I'll really break it down. The pitchers I have the most interest in, I'll post that article uh, over on Patreon. You know, if you want to get access to that, link is down in the description. But let's go ahead and talk about some hitters now since we pretty much broke down pitching. So just skimming through run totals for today, teams with high totals, a couple of teams that really stand out. Yankees have a 5.6 implied run total against Tukey Toussaint. Uh, We do have another courts game on the slate. Rockies with a 5.6 implied run total against Zach Gallen. Uh, Diamondbacks with a 5.5 total against Kyle Freeland. I think Coors Field is definitely going to be a target for this slate. Even got the Dodgers with a 5.2 implied run total against Garrett Richards. Uh, We don't know yet who's going to start for the Giants. Uh, Right now, DraftKings has it listed as Tyler Alexander, or Tyler Anderson, excuse me, but I don't know if that's actually, he's lined up to start Tuesday against Houston. So I guess it is going to be Tyler Anderson. You know, if Tyler Anderson's going to be pitching for the Giants here, then I definitely want some Astros bats, especially, you know, 
a lefty, and Tyler Anderson having to face guys like Altuve, Springer, Bregman, Correa, Gurriel. I uh, feel like the Astros are going to be definitely a team I target pretty heavily. But the get, or the teams that really stand out to me are the Diamondbacks, the Rockies, and the Yankees. We'll just start off with the Yankees. Um, so, you know, I don't know why, but DraftKings or Fantasy Labs, their lineup page isn't loading for DraftKings. Like, it's only showing Yahoo pricing, which is stupid. But if we do look at Yahoo's pricing for the Yankees tomorrow, they really stand out on Yahoo. You got guys like uh, Aaron Hicks for only $13. Glaber Torres is only $9. Uh, Talkman, you know, who's kind of taken over Giancarlo Stanton's spot in the outfield. This is actually a really good hitter, a guy that has a lot of pop. The only reason that Talkman doesn't get to play every day is because, you know, the Yankees have Aaron Judge, Aaron Hicks, uh, Giancarlo Stanton that they, you know, deploy in the outfield every day. Well, Stanton's on the IL now, so that's going to allow Mike Talkman to, you know, get playing time pretty much every day. He's really cheap. Gary Sanchez is only $8 at catcher. You know, he's almost minimum salary on Yahoo!, I think the guys that definitely stand out are Glaber Torres for sure. I mean, Glaber Torres, I like him a lot on both sides, but especially Yahoo at $9. I mean, that is just a laughable price tag for Glaber Torres. On on DraftKings, you know, he's more reasonably priced. He's 4400 But if I'm stacking the Yankees today, which I definitely will be, I mean, Glaber Torres is probably going to be one of the first guys I look to. I think he is too cheap on both sides. If we do take a look at Tuki Toussaint, this is a guy that we don't have much of a sample of. You know, he hasn't pitched too much in the majors. He's faced about 57 batters this season. Uh, last season, he worked mainly out of the bullpen, and he faced you know about uh, close to 200 batters total. So just looking at this season's number, very uh, this season's numbers, very small sample size, has given up a 335 woba to righties, 330 woba to lefties. In terms of home runs, you know, definitely given up power to righties, 2.7 home runs per nine to right-handed hitters. He's had some good strikeout numbers so far this season, but I don't know if you know a 30% K rate. I don't think that's going to continue for Toussaint. Not not a guy that had a 30% K rate last season. If we look at his numbers last season, though, you know, he was actually decent against righties, allowed a 277 Woba, but got mashed against lefties, uh, gave up a 488 Woba to lefties, gave up a ton of home runs to lefties as well, over or nearly three home runs per nine, you know, three home runs per nine exactly. This is definitely a spot where we can attack Tuki Toussaint. You know, I think this is a guy that in the future is going to be a really good pitcher. You know, he's talented, young guy for sure, but I don't know if this is a spot where I could see Tuki Toussaint just going out there and mowing down the Yankees. I just don't think that's going to happen here. I definitely like some of these Yankees bats, and especially looking at their pricing, talking about Yahoo, I mean, Torres for 9, Sanchez for 8, Topman for 14, Hicks for 13. I like all those guys a ton, and they're so cheap that it's going to allow you to pay up for guys like Judge and LeMayhew and Luke Voigt. You know, getting those values in Torres and Sanchez is going to free you up a ton of salary, so... Love Glaber Torres here. I think he's way too cheap, especially on Yahoo, but I like him a lot on DraftKings as well. Definitely going to be one of the first guys I look to uh, in my Yankee stacks. The Yankees, for sure, going to be a team I get a good amount of exposure to today uh, against Tuki Toussaint. But then another team, obviously, or another game, I should say, is Coors Field. I mean, usually when Coors Field's on the slate, it's always going to get attention, and I think we can definitely you know, look to target some dying backs here against Kyle Freeland. Uh, Kyle Freeland's actually been solid to start the season, but... Overall, you know, this is not the best pitcher. This is a guy we can definitely attack, especially with right-handed hitters. And, the you know, Dimebacks do have some righties that, you know, can hit left-handed pitching very well that do have power against lefties. Two guys that definitely stand out are Christian Walker and Eduardo Escobar. So Christian Walker on DraftKings, you know, he's only 4600 which I think is actually too cheap hitting in Coors Field. And then Eduardo Escobar, he looks like one of the best values. At third base, he's only 3900 I definitely like him as a cheap play over on DraftKings. So, both Walker and Escobar have really good numbers against left-handed pitching. Uh, Escobar, he's a switch hitter, but I'm pretty sure his numbers are better against lefties than righties. Uh, so he hits lefties well. Walker, you know, his ISO, I believe, against lefties is like over 200. You know, even might be higher than that. Both these guys do have some good pop. Facing Kyle Freeland, who, looking at his numbers last season, really, really struggled to righties. Gave up a 383 Woba to right-handed hitters. Gave up a ton of power to righties as well. 2.36 home runs per nine. And if we look at the strikeout rate, only a 15% K rate against right-handed hitters. This is a spot where I would expect Freeland probably gives up a couple bombs. You know, he's not going to get many strikeouts here. Doesn't have too high of a K rate against righties. We should see a lot of balls in play. I was very high on the Diamondbacks Monday night. And, you know, last time I checked, I think they had like six runs through five innings. They were doing really well as a stack. I'm definitely going to be right back on them today. Especially because, you know, looking at the DraftKings pricing, you got some value in this Diamondbacks lineup. We'll pull up the pricing real quick uh, just so you guys can see. So 
Now, you got your typical guys at the top, Marte, 5,200, uh, you know, both Martes, Cattell and Starling Marte, 52, 4,900. Cole Calhoun, I'm not sure if he'll be in the lineup, but, you know, he's 4,500. But, like, Nick Ahmed, a guy that can, you know, has decent numbers against lefties, he's only 4K. Carson Kelly, I assume, will be in the lineup at catcher. He's only 3,900. Even lefty-lefty, I think David Peralta will still be in the lineup. He's only 3,900. I don't know if we'll see, like, any of these guys crack the lineup. You know, Jake Lamb might be in the lineup. He's only uh, 2,900. But definitely, like, Escobar and Walker really stand out. Uh, Even though it's lefty-lefty, David Peralta at 3,900 I really like. I think Carson Kelly's probably one of the top catcher plays today. Uh, Nick Ahmed looks really good at shortstop. This is definitely a spot where we can load up on Diamondbacks hitters. And Walker and Escobar, probably two of my favorite targets in that lineup. Both can hit left-handed pitching well. Both have a good amount of power against lefties. And like I said, Kyle Freeland, you know, he really struggles with righties. Gave up a lot of power to righties last season. And hitting in course field, pitching in course field for him, not going to set up too well here. So definitely like some Diamondbacks hitters. And then if we look on the other side, the Rockies are obviously a team we can target for sure here against Zach Gallen. I mean, Zach Gallen, a young, very talented pitcher that I expect to be very good in the future. I just don't know if this is a spot where he's going to go out there and just mow down the Rockies. I do like some of these Rockies bats. And if we look at the pricing on Yahoo!, I mean, they got some really good pricing here. David Dahl, only $14 on Yahoo. I think that's one of the first guys that stands out. I think he batted like seventh on uh, Monday night, but that was because they faced a lefty. He should be back in the leadoff spot here against a right-handed pitcher. At only $14, David Dahl looks like an excellent value in the outfield. I mean, this is normally a guy we get at like $19, $18, close to $20 on Yahoo. He's only $14 here. You know, they priced him down yesterday because he was facing a lefty, and I guess they didn't adjust the price today left him at $14, so I love him um, in the outfield, and then if we go to third base, Nolan Arenado, he was way too cheap on Monday, you know, he was only $19 against a lefty, and now he's only $16 today, the price tag actually went down for Arenado, I know Gallon's a good pitcher, but still, Arenado for $13, like the fact that he's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, the fact that he's the seventh most expensive third baseman just shows you, you know, how soft the pricing is on Yahoo!, I don't know why Arenado's that cheap. Anytime he's in cores, you know, I always have interest in him, especially given, you know, the Rockies have a 5.5 total. Gallon's a good pitcher, but I don't mind attacking him here. If we do look at his numbers, you know, last season and so far this season, so, so far this season, he, he struggled slightly more to righties than lefties, you know, gave up a 338 Woba to righties. If we look at the home runs, he has really struggled with the long ball so far. 1.29 home runs per nine to lefties, uh, two home runs per nine to righties. This is a guy that does have good strikeout stuff, but... Course field, I know you know that can kind of, that can kind of mitigate the strikeout, especially if you throw a curveball a lot. Uh, that can definitely you know not be as effective in course field with the altitude. I'm not sure exactly if uh, Gallon has a curveball in his picks in his pitch mix. I think he does, uh, but don't quote me on that. But if we do look at Gallon's numbers against lefties or against uh, lefties and righties last season, uh, about equal: 287 wOBA to lefties, 288 wOBA to righties. Didn't get didn't give up a ton of home runs either. 1.06 home runs per nine to lefties. 0.72 to righties. Did have good strikeout stuff against both sides of the plate. But again, I think this is a spot where I probably want to attack Zach Gallen. Just because he's pitching in course field, this is a tough Rockies lineup. It's just hard for you know, young pitchers to go into course field and succeed. I like the Rockies here. I think with their pricing, like their DraftKings pricing, they're pretty expensive on DraftKings, so you're probably going to get them at somewhat low ownership today. They might be chalky on Yahoo, but you can definitely get different when you stack the Rockies. You know, you can roster the chalky guys at the top like David Dahl, like Arenado, but don't leave out the bottom of the lineup hitters. The bottom of the lineup hitters always come in at much lower ownership than some of the top guys. So that's automatically going to make your uh, make your stack contrarian when you have some of those bottom of the lineup guys. Right now they have Matt Kemp and Chris Owings in the projected lineup, but I would assume that you're probably going to see Tapia and I don't know who else would be in there. Maybe Sam Hilliard. We'll just have to see what their lineup is when it comes out. I know Tapia's been really cheap. He's, yeah, he's minimum salary on Yahoo, so if Tapia cracks the lineup, you know, he could be a good value at just $7. Pretty easy to get the Rockies in today. Like, you can honestly, it's kind of, you know, sad to say, but you can literally play Scherzer and Wheeler together and still get, like, a full Rocky stack or a full Yankee stack with how bad the pricing is on Yahoo right now. I don't know why these guys are so cheap. I think Yahoo's, like, you know, they're taking too much into account, like, in terms of this season statistics. You know, guys are getting off to slow starts, so Yahoo's just pricing everyone down. Like, uh, Glaber Torres, I know he's been, like, in a bit of a slump. So they're just pricing him down, like, thinking that he sucks. But, you know, this is still one of the best-hitting shortstops in the league, in my opinion. And the fact that he's $9 is just laughable to me. Same with, like, David Dahl. 
and Arenado. I don't know why these guys are so cheap. Gary Sanchez for eight dollars. I mean, that's just stupid. But this is what I'm liking on Yahoo for today. Uh, early, you know, an early core. This is what I'm liking on DraftKings. I will have updated core plays posted on Yahoo. You know, once we get lineups out in the afternoon. You know, once I can evaluate everything deeply. I will have my article posted for this slate as well on Patreon, probably you know around two, I would, I would say like maybe three to four hours before lock, probably around like 12 or one o'clock Eastern time. I'll get that article up, you know, I'll go through each position. I know I didn't do that in this video, but I do that in my article, go through each position, talk about all the hitters I like at each position, the guys I have the most interest in. Uh, you can definitely check out the Patreon link down below. You can see all that I have to offer over there. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. As always, I do appreciate that guys. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you in the next video. Peace.